The Basilisk is an extremely powerful Nod unit that goes hand in hand with Exam because it's like basically the Giga Cannon if you guys don't know what it does. It's a flying battleship that powers up its lasers after 2 seconds and it will continuously attack your opponent's unit. So it's a really cool unit and a very still a very strong Temple of Nod unit to use because it's also an air unit as well so it's very hard to kill. But anyways in this first game you'll see my opponent rushing my Harvester here. He's got a tank, he's got cyber wheels and I know exactly what's going to happen. So I'm going to try to protect my Harvester as best as I can. My Harvester only being at level 6 while his tank being at level 10. That means my Harvester will relatively die quick to any rushes like this. But I do a nice block here and I, as soon as I see those bikes coming in. Had those bikes got to my Harvester, my Harvester would have definitely died. I killed both of his bikes before one of his bike and that squad could land a rocket. So my Harvester survives. And here my Harvester once again barely survives as he sends a second of bike. This guy's trying so hard to kill my Harvester here. He sends Cyber Wheels, more bikes to the top. And I start rolling my tanks out because I want to stop any harvesters that he starts building he does get my harvester here at this point with that cyber wheel and i know he's going to try to build a harvester so what i do is i keep my bikes my tanks all surrounded kind of i try to keep as much vision vision as i can so as soon as the harvester rolls out i'm going to kill it and i see that harvester i boost my tank up with a xana and i go immediately for that harvester he tries to defend his harvester here as best as he can and when you lose a Harvester, which I did in this case, you really want to try to kill your opponent's Harvester as fast as you can or as best as you can. But instead, I start switching it up. I go for the missile instead. I send two tanks to the middle because I want to capture this missile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a tank to the top, to the bottom, one in the middle. They're holding a the launch pad. Missile's almost done. So I'm going to capture this missile. And once it's captured, I'm going to go back right on to killing that Harvester because you know what? I don't want him having those three crystals on me so I do a revenge kill which was sweet on my part I got his harvester he's not farming as much here and I have the basilisk and that's the kind of the unit I want to bring the basilisk just to let you guys know like the gear cannon is pretty much good against all ground units even laser squads so you can see I just start firing on his laser squad and the basilisk is doing a lot of damage with my cyber wheel now the basilisk has also been changed quite a bit he used to just fire this continuous laser beam where it wouldn't stop attacking but it seems like the basilisk now attacks for like two seconds gets powered up and then stops attacking and then it and it will restart attacking and then it'll have to boost up or power up its laser again after two seconds so there's just a bit of a a bit of a disconnection when the basilisk is continuously attacking your opponent's units and i'm not sure if this was done because the basilisk was too powerful in the past but anyways, you can see my Basilisk at the top did a lot of damage. And right now he's pumping out a bunch of bikes and banshees. So in this case, of course, you're not going to be building Basilisks as much. You want to, I just spam attack bikes because attack bikes are one of the best ways to deal with banshees. And that one single Basilisk really helped me deal with most of his ground infantry units. And other vehicle units as well. So he had to kind of transition into banshees there. So you can see how much of a threat these big battleships can be. All right, this will be the second game guys and this time it's actually my opponent that brings in the Basilisk as you guys see I'm playing as Colonel Jackson on the GDI side here. I go for a standard harvester So is my opponent. I've got a, a war factory built here with the Kodiak battleship I was trying to do some Kodiak gimmicks some go Kodiak uh, battleship rushes Now what I do is I see that harvester on my opponent's side with my war dog what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a tank because I actually wanted to snipe this harvester as quick as I can because this is one of those maps where harvesters can get easily sniped as crystals are kind of very close to the center of the map. So what I do is I start rolling, sneaking a Predator tank to the top, up to the north. I don't know what kind of units my unit uh, opponent would field, but you know, I didn't want to risk any chance of him farming too many crystals here and going for some crazy good units. So he sends his laser squad to try to kill my harvester. And my tank does so much damage, and it will, it's going to bring down his Harvester. I build one Shockwave to deal with his Laser Squads, and I do a pretty solid job here at the beginning of the game here. I should have went for the Missile. I made a couple mistakes in this game. At this point, I should definitely try to capture this Missile, and that's kind of what I do. He has a really fast Banshee up, and unfortunately, that's going to counter my tanks. My Shockwave is doing its best to capture it, uh, the, the launch pads here. And he does a nice counter on me. He builds a Venom 
And unfortunately, Venoms will just wreck Shockwaves. They kill them so fast. The Banshee, you know, took out my tanks, took out my War Dogs to the top because Banshees counter all War Factor units. My Pitbull, one level lower than the Banshee, is going to lose a fight against the Banshee at full health. So I lose the first missile here. I should have definitely done a better job at transitioning. Now he boosts up his Banshee and he actually gets a kill on my Harvester. That's a 300 crystals for him and he's going to be able to get a Temple of Nod up. I kill another Harvester of his, but you know, I don't know if he has a Basilisk or not. And I ideally wouldn't want a Basilisk to come out as mostly I have ground units. I don't have enough money to bring out the Hammerhead. I actually ended up spending 120 crystals to go for a Kodiak. Again, another silly mistake because this guy has a lot of air units. Right now, he's doing a very good job in microing his Venoms to kill my Shockwaves and his Banshees and Laser Squads are taking care of my Pitbulls. So he's doing a much better job than me at microing here. And I made some silly decisions like going for a Tech Lab because the Kodiak Battleship ain't going to squat at this point. That Basilisk is starting to wreck everything on the ground. As you guys can see, it's melting tanks, it's melting pit bulls, it's melting my missile squads, my shock waves, and he's got pretty much full control of everything here. My pit bull is not going to be able to get close to that. Xana boosted Basilisk, that's going to shred my ground units. And this is one of those maps also, if you put a Basilisk close to the center of the map, because of its two tile range, it can fire away anywhere it wants. This is a kind of the defense, sort of a defensive map where if you can kind of control these two launch pads with two tile range units, you have a really great time. And once again, my shockwave at the bottom, even though it got control of the map on the top, and my shockwave on the top did it as well. The basilisk and the venom is just too much. Um, and like I said, guys, basilisks like the Giga Cannon, they will s still do a lot of damage to infantry units over time as their laser, laser charges up. So you really have to watch for that, even though they're only supposed to be good at, against uh, vehicle units. You always have to be aware of all these kind of things. These two tiled laser units are something you don't want to mess with, with when you're dealing with them. Ideally, you want to use air units to kill basilisks because that's kind of like the only way you can get close to them without taking too much damage with your ground units. This will be the final game. We are going to take a look at guys and this time is back to me uh, using the Basilisk here with Commander Xana against my opponent here, KS Theorist. He's got the classic Colonel Jackson and uh, just to let you guys know, Colonel Jackson player right here, he's got all 11 units, level 11 units and most of my units are quite under level compared to him so it was it was quite challenging to play against this guy as you guys can see my cyber wheels immediately die being like three levels lower than these missile squads i see him trying to kill my harvester here and i don't want that to happen so what i do is i just spam a whole bunch of cyber wheels as you guys can see cyber wheels were kind of my only option against infantry here at this point because i didn't have any flame squads or hand of nod units and cyber wheels are cheap so i just spam them but at this point, I just roll a tank out. I figured, hey, you know what? I don't think I'm going to keep be able to keep up with this. I don't think I can keep my Harvester alive. I probably could have if I just kept spamming the Cyber Wheels. But, you know, I just let him kill my Harvester. I decided, hey, let's go for a trade. I might as well trade with him because let's make this worth it. But he boosts his Missile Squad just in time with Colonel Jackson. And my Scorpion tank fails to kill that Harvester. That Harvester barely lives with a sliver of health. And it's looking pretty bad for me because he's got 320 crystals. He's got so much economy right now. He has so many missile squads. And I only have War Factory units and Air Tower units. And guess what? None of my Air Tower units are going to do squad against these missile squads. So I'm trying to duke it out with this guy. These level 11 missile squads are just so strong compared to my units. I'm thinking, okay, you know what? My only choice is to go for a Basilisk. I have to kill this Harvester. And thank God that Scorpion Tank finally bypassed this wall of missile squad that allowed me go, to go for a uh, temple of nod and i tried to not let him build, finish this first missile here i need to kill some time and i want to ideally kill another harvester that's what i do i send another scorpion tank and missile is pretty much going to go to him on this side but once again i kill all his missile squads on the top missile stop building it i'm getting some time to allow for maybe one or two basilisks um here in mid to the late mid to late game here He's got jump jets as well. Jump jets, of course, they're gonna absolutely wreck all my War Factory units. And he finally gets the first missile here. But I really wanna get that Basilisk out and I finally have enough money. I've saved it enough because I killed another Harvester of his and my Basilisks start doing work. And as you guys see, Basilisks are pretty good against these ground units, including infantry units. 
and the cyber wheels with basilisk are a pretty good combo but he rushes in surprise with colonel jackson uh hammerhead and that's absolutely going to wreck my basilisk basilisk went down immediately to that he this player knew exactly how to counter like i said best way to counter basilisk are using anti-air units like banshees hammerhead or towns because ground units um it's very hard to get close to a basilisk when it's charged up, it's pretty scary. I kill his hammerhead, but he immediately gets another hammerhead. His hammerhead being like three levels higher. Like I said, this guy all had he had he had max level units at Diamond League here, so like he's just going to absolutely wreck all my guys here. I get Phantoms and Banshees up at this point because I gotta deal with uh, a, the tank that's down on the south and his hammerhead as well, and his jump jet can't attack air. So I figured, hey, missile's almost done. I'm gonna have to send a phantom to the top. I'm gonna have to control the bottom missile launch pad here, as, missile launcher pad here as well, with my air units. And his hammerhead goes down there, um, and my phantom can't be attacked by his hammer uh, by his jump jets. So I captured the uh, second missile here by being able to hold on to these two launch pads. I boost up my banshee here again. I want to get another basilisk up, and that's what I do. And I don't see any hammerheads coming out from his side yet because really his biggest threat. That, that really poses against my Basilisk is not the Missile Squad, it is the Hammerhead. As you guys saw how fast those Hammerheads took down both my Basilisk. Now I'm kind of having the momentum here. He goes for another Hammerhead here, however, but I have two Basilisks and I've got some Phantom supports here as well. So as long as I get two of my Phantoms to attack this Hammerhead at the same time, which is what I do, that Hammerhead goes down. Immediate burst damage from a Phantom kills that Hammerhead, uh, kills the Hammerheads. But anyways, I get my Basilisk onto the top launch pad and the bottom launch pad. And look at how fast he shred the, the tank with Xana's boosted power. But he's got a Talon. He's spamming a whole bunch of Talons now, trying to capture his launch pad as best as he can. I go for a whole bunch of Banshees instead of Phantoms because he's only got Talons now. I don't see any Phantoms. And, uh, I mean, I don't see any Hammerheads, but I see another Hammerhead here. And I Tower Block it with my Banshee. My Basilisk held the top. I got a bike really fast down to the south launch pad as well, just in case that hammerhead took out my banshee and moved on to that launch pad. And I capture the missile here, winning me the game. And that's how it is, guys. As you guys can see, the basilisk is a very powerful unit. And if you use it with air support like the Phantom and the Banshee, you're going to do very well. You just have to survive to mid and late game and just watch the basilisk melt down ground units to the ground even faster than Giga Cannon sometimes. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about the Basilisk. I think it's still a very good unit to use right now. And I'll see you guys next time.